Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to this online gathering. I hope you're keeping well and staying safe. And that was a great intro, wasn't it, Rachel? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I, I loved seeing um, lots of different people from Glenwood there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sally chopping a veg and yeah. chopping a minty. Yeah. And, uh, and that dog that brushing dog, his teeth. That dog, fantastic um, dog. That, I think that's the Camilleri's dog, isn't it? Is it is the Camilleri's dog, yeah. and uh, it is a mad dog. <laughs> is it? It is a it's mad a, dog. It's sweet well, gorgeous, it? yeah. but, but he's mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was Meg that put that together. Meg wasn't did it? put it together. Yeah. Did a great job. Great job. And Mike did the music. Mike so Brown did the music to it. So anybody want music composing? Here's your man. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Well, this week we thought uh, we're going to start a new series, and uh, we're going to be looking at a few, not all of them, the gifts of the Holy, Sp the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, mm. we're going to look mm. at the fruits of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Nicely and, corrected. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be starting with uh, patience. So. Uh, Rachel, thinking of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, mm. let's just, you know, mm. not beat ourselves about, but mm. which do you think is you're good at? Oh, tricky. I find it very hard to answer that because I think it I is. know myself quite well. Okay, and I know then. even if I appear one thing, then, yeah. you know, I know myself. Um, but I would hope um, joy, joy is quite important yes, for it me because I think despite what's going on to kind of to know joy is yeah. really important fantastic so. well yeah I'm what about you i'm going to speak on that next week oh good yeah for yeah. me I, th I think i must be honest i'm good at patience oh really yeah yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> i know i know <laughs> <laughs> no, it seems an odd one that, no. but I must confess, if no. I give myself marks out of 10, I'm up there with a 9, 9.5. Oh, wow, that's, yeah. that's generous, Paul. Humility? No, to be fair, I think you are a patient person. I am a patient, yeah, yeah, I have to be yeah. with the people I work with, so <laughs> bless you, thank you. So anyway, let's move on into uh, our programme, and yeah. uh, why don't you just uh, say what's going to happen for the next few Yes, so we're, we're going to um, be having a reading from Geraint um, and a song and then a faith story from George Camilleri. Excellent. Without yeah. the dog, I think. Yeah, well, so you never know. Never know, yeah. yeah. No, we haven't seen it yet. No. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Galatians 5, verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Praise you, I will praise you 
hope is lost, I'll call you safe. When pain surrounds, I'll hold you here. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. Morun Sustai. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your um, love and support and prayer for the, uh, the last year just gone. Um, I've been in Cambodia for just uh, just under a year now. Um, time has flown by. Um, yeah, and it's been incredible. Um, I started my journey in Hawaii doing a Bible school over there. And then uh, that was for a couple months and then went to Cambodia and have been there um, ever since until now. Um, yeah, it's been a great time. I've been working with UFN Buttonbong, which is um, half affiliated with YWAM. I've been working with uh, their YDC, which is a, an English school. Um, and I've been part of the Harvesters team, which is what we call our team that uses, uses social media and different ways of communicating um, in ways to, uh, to reach people. So that's like Facebook and calling people and things like that. Um, uh, in Cambodia, uh, street evangelism has been found to be quite difficult. Um, I think Khmer culture is very um, based on, on trust and relationships, and so it's just really not an effective way to reach people. And so we found that the best way is to have a campus that's very inviting and um, is for the community, which is why we have a school, we have a gym, we have um, a ton of stuff for people to get involved with and then it's through that and through relationship building that we are able to reach them and to, um, to yeah, and to share share with them about the gospel and, and about Jesus and uh, we usually get about 400 students come through every three months or so. So it's it's really amazing and then our goal of that is to, when we teach our students, we introduce them to, to Jesus and we build relationships with them that way and then our final goal is to bring them back for our DTS school, which is a discipleship training school. And um, yeah, it's been effective so far. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens um, going back after this COVID-19 situation is, is done. I'm excited for, to, see things, to see things grow and see things shift. And yeah, so yeah, I'm home due to COVID-19. It wasn't a safe place anymore, unfortunately. Uh, I will be going back. Um, as soon as it's safe, whether that's when uh, the borders open or whether it's a little bit um, after that, I'm not too sure. Well, I, I'll just go going about it day by day. Um, so that's uh, one of the main things to pray for, I think, is just for Cambodia as a whole and the whole situation. But um, there are still people there who were on our campus that have stayed. Um, they are on complete lockdown, um, half because of COVID and half because of people. Um, they're on lockdown in the campus and they are just focusing on distributing food and I mean, keeping safe themselves. Um, all of our ministries have been cancelled at this point, all of our schools, um, uh, but they are using this time wisely to prepare for rising back up. Um, and so I'm still working um, and doing things for the base and the campus. Um, I have um, projects to do and different um, ways to, uh, to still get involved which is good. I'm also keeping myself busy, but I'm fine. I'm home, um, safe and sound. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support and your prayers. Um, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to receive updates, give me a message, get in touch. Um, I'd love to catch up with, with all of you. Thank you so much. Um, have a good Sunday. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, all those taking part there. Thank you for Gary in your garden, nice garden, uh, mm. filming there. And I think your friend Helen filmed that, so mm. that was great. Um, also Mike and your lovely song and George, um, great to hear your journey mm. and where you are now. And we'll mm. certainly be praying for you as a church. Mm. So thank you. Yeah, that was great. And mm. uh, so now we've asked uh, Stephen and Jill Bailey if they will lead us in prayer. So they're going to lead that now and there's parts of it where we can join in and you'll know when that is because the words will come up on the screen for us to say together. So Steve and Jill, thank you. Last Thursday was Ascension Day and next Sunday is Pentecost. In these 10 days between the two, we can join with millions of other Christians around the world praying, Lord, your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. So let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we bless your name. King of Kings, in all the uncertainty that surrounds us, we thank you that your kingdom cannot be shaken. We thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness and for your patience towards us. Please forgive us when we are impatient with one another, with you and with ourselves. We lift to you all those who are waiting, particularly those whose treatment and operations have been postponed because of the situations in hospitals, those who are waiting to get back to work and those who don't know if they will have a job to go back to, those who are not able to go back to their homes after the floods earlier this year, and those in refugee camps around the world who wait and long for peace and a return home. Lord, we pray for your grace and mercy. We ask for wisdom for our politicians and medical advisers in balancing courage and caution as they decide about our way forward and for perseverance for all those struggling to cope with their present situation. And for ourselves, we pray that in all our waiting and our impatience, we'd have grace to wait with intention, with purpose, with our focus on you. Lord, Lord help, help us, us to be patient. patient. May we not be driven by frustration, not provoked by irritations, not unsettled by uncertainty, not be brought down when things seem hopeless, directionless and dark. Lord, Lord help, help us to be patient with one another and with ourselves. Lord, help us not to rush the moment, nor snatch at opportunities, not to create busyness for its own sake, but rather to create kindness. Lord, help us to be patient and wait. Help us to be willing to wait for the right words and actions, to give or receive, to be waiting still for the right time. Lord, help us to be patient and wait for your time and for you. May we have patience in our hoping, in our expectation and in knowing you are with us. Lord, help us to be patient and wait for your time and for you. May your kingdom come, your will be done in us and through us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are again on a Friday afternoon on the building site, just bringing you an update. As you can see, there's a few things going on with the digger and they've been putting the drainage in and uh, next week they're going to start knocking down the walls down here and opening it up, and, uh, which is exciting. And then a week Monday the steel arrives and they will start erecting the steel. That'll take a few weeks and that will make a big transformation. But you can see down here there's a, there's a gutter not a gutter, sorry, it's a drain, bringing in uh, the water through there and uh, they're working hard and doing a great job. Uh, inside you'll see that uh, they started boarding up part of it so that it uh, becomes secure when they knock these walls down next week and uh, we'll come back then and probably give you another update in a few weeks time and there's a gale blowing now uh, which is going into everybody's eyes but uh, thank you so much again for your support, your financial support, it's just wonderful to see all that's going on because you've given that money. Thank you so much. Well, I hope that uh, gave you all a little insight into the work that's going on in the building. I think in a week's time, we'll probably see a bit more improvement as the steel comes in. Mm. So that's great. And again, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting the appeal. And uh, just to say, we still need a, another £150,000 to, mm. to get all the bells and whistles in the building. So please keep praying for mm. the trust applications that are out there. That would really help. Uh, so much, thank you. So we're going to have a sequence now where we're going to have a refraction uh, and then uh, an interview, or sorry, not an interview, Steve Hilsden's going to share a little bit about his working life. And his faith story. His faith yeah. story, it's his and faith story and it's quite dramatically yeah. filmed, isn't it? It's quite it's action, impressive. Action piece. Action piece. Yeah. Dave, Dave has done an action piece, which is, which is great. It's fantastic. And when you see it, you just imagine he did that driving and filming at the same time. Quite remarkable. No, he didn't. For those who might take that seriously, he didn't. Okay. And then uh, there'll be uh, a song uh, and then Carol will share with us about patience. Mm.
Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar, and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless, and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, I've been part of Glenwood Church for almost 40 years and I work for a credit insurance company in the Bay. I'm one of the fortunate ones. I'm used to working at home, but I've been working at home now for about eight or nine weeks. And most of the time I'm here on my own because Liz is a key worker and she's out at work. And whilst I enjoy doing the job, it gets a bit lonely. The only face I see The whole week is uh, my wife when she's in the house. And when you're part of a team of about 60 people, it's strange to be not able to see them face to face easily, to talk to them, to encourage them, and to just 
have the usual office chat and banter. So what do I do? Um, well, I try <clears throat> my best to encourage my colleagues in the office. I send them mails to find out if they're okay. You know, I know that there are people who uh, live alone. Uh, there are people who are, you know, family situation, you know, about that family situation. So I ask that they're okay. I ask to check that they're having, uh, managing all right with work and, and how their family are getting on. I've shared the, uh, <clears throat> that blessing video the other day with a couple of guys that I know are Christians in the office who so bless them as, what, as much as it blessed me. But I'm so thankful for the exercise time. Uh, many of you will know I ride a bike to and from work and I like to get out early first thing in the morning when no one's around, it's safer. And I ride around all through Cardiff and I, I use that as a time to bless and encourage and to pray for people whose houses I pra pass near, for churches whom I pass that God would encourage the folk in those churches, that they would just be kept safe in these difficult times and that um, he, they would know that they're loved and valued and, and wanted. And I pray for members of our congregation, people I know who, whose houses I pass. I pray blessing and health and well-being because I feel that's what God wants me to do. I've been out today uh, praying for people as I ride around the area and uh, for churches that I've passed and just pray that we may see God's new thing come out in uh, the end of this exercise.
Hello again, Glenwood family and friends. It's great to spend these couple of moments with you. Back in December, Forbes magazine asked the question, is it okay to wait at Starbucks? The writer said that a long wait isn't typical of most Starbucks locations. There are 31,000 Starbucks around the world. Perhaps that's why. But now Starbucks is trialing a new concept they call roasteries. These are urban hip locations where the company intentionally serves the customer slowly. So how slow is this wait? Well, apparently only six minutes or one and a half minutes longer than a typical wait in Starbucks from a prior study. Any longer and people apparently lose patience. Yet many people waited much longer earlier this month when Starbucks drive throughs reopened for the first time since lockdown in March. We'll leave the debate of whether Starbucks coffee is tasty or not for another time. The pertinent question for us today is how patient are you? We've all heard sayings like, Rome wasn't built in a day, a washed pot never boils, first things first, all of these sayings describing the importance of and the need for patience. Yet it's such a difficult thing for most of us. If you're like me, at some point in your life, you've, you've found yourself struggling and crying out to God, give me patience, maybe about a relationship with someone else, maybe a, a piece of technology, maybe another driver on the road, or even this current lockdown situation. For example, if, like me, you've gone out to the supermarket during lockdown, you will have noticed that there are now social distancing signs and directional arrows in supermarkets. So what happens when you're at the end of an aisle and you see something about a quarter of the way up the aisle that you want, but the arrows are coming out in the opposite direction? Are you person A, B, or C? If you're person A, you follow the directional arrows. So you go down to the next aisle, you walk the entire way down the aisle, you turn the corner, you come three quarters of the way back to the item that you want. If you're person B, you have a look around, you see that no one is, is in the aisle, and you take your trolley and you reverse back up the aisle to the item that you want. Your trolley facing in the correct direction. If your person C, you look around, you see that no one is in the aisle, you ignore the arrows completely, and you go and get the item that you want. Your response to that scenario may say something about your capacity for patience. A challenge for most of us, patience is described in one dictionary as the capacity to tolerate waiting, delay, or frustration without becoming agitated or upset. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, may God who gives this patient and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with one another as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. I'm not implying that all Starbucks customers or even people who follow directional arrows pray for patience, but asking God for patience isn't a bad place to start. It's clear that he is the source of patience. And there are apparently benefits to having patience. Health professionals say that people who exhibit patience have reduced stress levels, making them happier and healthier, able to make better and wiser decisions, and helping develop empathy and compassion, which results in more meaningful relationships. But perhaps Paul's prayer to the church in Colossa in modern day Turkey sheds more light for our current situation today, especially in the midst of this coronavirus lockdown. Paul writes from his prison cell, which is perhaps the most severe lockdown possible, where he's been placed for sharing his faith. And this is what he writes. We have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. 
We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. Paul takes this idea of good fruit one step further when he writes to the church in Galatians in chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. The last time you picked up a piece of fruit, did you consider how long it took from when the seed was planted until the harvest? The apple a day that keeps the doctor away apparently takes seven to 10 years from planting until harvest. If patience is a fruit, it will take time and the right nourishment to grow in our lives. In fact, Jesus uses another fruit analogy, the grape, to describe that process in John chapter 15. He says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If we want patience to grow in our lives, we must remain in Christ. We must live in Christ, abide in Christ, and he must remain in us. Not just when the going is good, but all the time. We must allow the gardener to snip away those bits of our lives that are sucking in nutrients but not giving anything back. Sometimes he'll even trim the bits that are producing fruit, the bits that are producing patience and love and self-control so that more grows in the future. There are some tragic examples in scripture of people who lacked patience and the consequences that came to them and those around them because of that. There was Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. Fair play, being homeless and not knowing where your next meal is coming from for 40 years can be a bit daunting. But they got frustrated, they got annoyed with God, they began grumbling and complaining. They made demands upon God. And as a result, the entire generation of people who had experienced that incredible escape from Egypt and crossing through the Red Sea never set foot in the Promised Land. There was Saul, the first king of Israel, the one who came before the famous King David. Saul was between a rock and a hard place with the warring Philistines, and his troops were deserting him left, right, and center. The Prophet Samuel, the prophet of God, told him to remain in Gilgal until he arrived. But Saul grew impatient. So what did he do? He, he offered burnt sacrifices, burnt offerings to God, something that only the prophet was supposed to do. And as a result, he lost his kingship and the honor that would have come with the forever kingdom. Check it out in 1 Samuel chapter 13. I'm not sure that the main point is whether we have patience or how much patience we have or not. It's about where we turn when we are lacking that patience, when we become impatient. Think of Hannah in the Old Testament, who desperately wanted a child but could not conceive. In her time of grief and agony, she was bullied by Elkanah's other wife. She was treated unfairly. To whom did she turn? She turned to God. Think of Stephen in the early church, that young man who was full of passion for Jesus and unashamed about sharing his faith. And even as the mob was stoning him, he looked up to heaven and he cried out to God that he would forgive the people who were killing him. Maybe you've also heard of the patience of Job, that good man in the Old Testament who had it all and then one day, suddenly, his servants are killed, his cattle are destroyed, and even the house in which his children are having a party is destroyed and all lives are lost. I'm not sure that Job would have said he was a person of patience. 
But what I do know is that when his wife and when his closest friends encouraged him to turn his back on God, he refused. So as we finish our time together today, let's consider why patience might be important on our spiritual journeys, especially now. If we can practice patience before we speak or tweet or blog or share our opinions, we might avoid causing all kinds of pain and offense in other people's lives. If we can patiently delay personal gratification, we might realize how self-centered our lives often are and learn to extend hospitality and, and generosity in new ways. It's being forced upon us now, and there are some amazing stories about people who are reaching out to their neighbors or helping those most vulnerable. But what if we practiced it all the time? If we learn to patiently slow down, we might even notice things and people and sounds that we never heard before. We might even hear the voice of God and learn to, to know well that famous psalm, be still and know that I am God. Finally, patience is not a standalone quality. It's not a fruit on its own. We talked about the numerous fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's closely linked with love. Think of 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient. It's also closely linked with endurance and suffering in scripture. The disciple James encouraged the early church to be patient in the face of suffering and to follow the example of the old prophets. Maybe that's a good word for us this season. For fruit to grow, you need different seasons. So let's recap. How patient are you? Do you recognize that God is the source? God is the one who gives us patience. Do we recognize that, that patience takes time and many different seasons to grow? And we've also reflected soberly on the consequences of what can happen in our own life and the lives of those around us if we lack patience. And so the important thing to remember is where do we turn when we are becoming acutely impatient? Can we commit today to praying for one another, that we would all grow in patience, that we would remain in Christ even though we are separated from one another, that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would produce patience and other fruit in our lives. May we use this lockdown season to grow in patience so that when we meet up again and we can see each other again face to face, we are not the same people who entered lockdown. Uh, thank you for that, Carol. It's, mm. it's great to talk about patience. And uh, I know I said it was one of my favorites, mm. but, but it is a lovely fruit mm. of the spirit it is. to have yeah. it, under Important, pressure yeah. as well. Especially it is. at the moment. Especially at the moment, mm. yes. Yeah. So mm. continue to pray. God will bless you with that. And mm. uh, so it's, uh, it's the end of another, another yes. week. Yeah. And uh, as ever, we're going to finish with the grace. And uh, we'd love you to join in with us wherever you're sat and there'll be that sense of being connected as we say it all together at the end here. Yeah, lovely. Mm. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. It's, it's always lovely to do the, the grace together mm. and I pray that you feel connected a bit more as a church. Um, but also to say, uh, we've had quite a lot of people ask us if we could show some of the bloopers. So we'll do it occasionally and we'll post them also on the Facebook page, the Glenwood Facebook page. But uh, Dave has put together a, a series of bloopers from the past six weeks. Mm. And I just have to say, I take no responsibility for these. Well, uh, it's all there on camera. It's so all there on camera. Yeah, yeah it is, unfortunately. <laughs> Evidence. Evidence. But yeah. uh, after, there's going to have the prayer points repeated from George and from Steve Hilsden. And after that will be the bloopers. Thank you. Uh, introducing bloopers. 
Dave has put together a, a series of bloopers after the past uh, six weeks uh, from What a perfect way to introduce the bloopers. <laughs> May the grace of God... Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that, uh, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get the giggles right. <laughs> the resource that's available for us uh, mm. to use online, um, but first, uh, but online, yes, but also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for your head. Have I? Hopefully this will again be something that encourages and blesses you. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> you didn't ask it. <laughs> I was all ready for you to ask me the question. <coughs> okay. Sorry. So you're going to ask me? I'm going to ask you. For those who, who may not know it as well. Mm -hmm. So. I think you need to put together a series of bloopers for the, bloopers for the time that Paul hits himself. Because it's, I know, so you could have a really good collage. <laughs> it looks quite painful. It is actually. You have no, you've got no hair to protect. <laughs> There's no brain hurt either, so don't worry about it. We've got to do it all again, haven't we? Do you know why? Is it, is it too many things to think about? Don't be so patronising. <laughs> But of course, what I haven't told you, that's without gift aid. Mm. I know. So and if you put gift aid in, we have raised aid. a massive 101... <laughs> <laughs> He's, he and Jane have run it uh, three times. Or... May the... Grace. This is a mind black, just black. Oh, we do it so well. Brilliant. Hey. That's the best time we've ever done. I think it is. Yeah. I'm going. 